Hi everybody, it's Dr. Lori. This is Ask Dr. Lori Live. Everything's unscripted, I don't know what's coming. My guests are here from all over the world. Hold up those objects, let's see what you've got. Interesting, hold on. I can't see your faces. Let's see those faces. Let's go with this guy who has a red shirt on and he looks like he's holding a necklace or some kind of link. It's a wooden necklace, um, handmade. Hi, how are you? I'm good. I'm Vic. Hi, Vic. What, uh, where are you calling from? Tampa, Florida. Nice to see you. So this is handmade. Did you make it? No, I didn't make it. Uh, I bought it as a jewelry set. Uh, I know it's handmade because each link is not perfect. And inside here, there's like, there's like different cuts. Can you take it off your neck so I can look at it oh, a little more closely? Sure. Be careful. Okay. Sure. So what made you purchase it? Uh, it just came with a lot of jewelry. Okay. So you like it because it's handmade? Uh, I, I thought it was worth some money because it's real wood and it's handmade. Do you have any idea what type of wood it is? I think it's teak, but I'm not positive. Get closer for me. And try to move your hands away. Oh, okay. You know what I mean? That's what I mean. Yep. There you go. Thank you. Is that better? Yeah. It does look like, you know, you got to go by the grain and not the stain. I talk about wood a lot. About the, the, it's about all about the grain. What does the grain look like? That particular piece does, in fact, look like it could be teak. Um, the other thing about it, though, the, the, the actual color of it is a little bit dark for teak, but I like it. How long is it? Um, about uh, 16 inches. 16 inches? Okay. Yeah. So um, it looked a little bit longer on your neck. It looked about 24 inches, 22 inches. It looked like it hit around here. But, uh -huh. you know, you have it with you. I don't. I would say that a couple of things about it. In the 1970s, these were pretty popular. You yeah, saw 70s. a lot of these kinds of pieces, right, Vic? And then I would say value on that piece, no more than 65 bucks. How much did you pay for it? A dollar. I would say that the piece probably was made in the United States as well. For a dollar, you did great. Based on actual yeah, sales dollar. records where similar pieces have sold, have sold. So let me ask you, um, Vic, do you use the binge link to binge all my videos? Yeah, I do. Is, I it, do. is it helpful? Yes. Yes, Good. it's great. Well, great. I'm glad to hear that. i got another question for you if you'll indulge me. The, uh -huh. the Winter Olympics. If you had to choose a sport in the Winter Olympics, do you like bobsled or do you like curling better? Uh, bobsled. Curling is slow. It's you like like Bob's that it's moving yeah. right? faster. <laughs> nice to see you. Take care. All right. Thank you. My pleasure. So a couple of different things when you're looking at pieces like that. First of all, natural pieces. One of the things that Vic said that actually is accurate is what to look for. For example, you want to look for the, I told you about, of course, the grain of the wood will be important, but also something that hands made, something that is not machine made or that is handmade usually is not uh, stamped out, right? So if it's handmade, there might be an imperfection or there might be something where they're not absolutely exact. That's one of the tips too. So, but don't forget, it's all about the, it's all about the grain, not about the stain when it comes to wooden pieces. That's true if it's a wooden uh, necklace or a wooden table or anything else. My guests are here. Let's see what they've got. Make sure in the, in the um, comments, uh, a couple of things I'm going to ask you to do. Hit the like, will you? If you like the channel, if you want to subscribe to the channel. And also, of course, tell me, where are you watching from or calling from? And do you? how do you answer the question of the day? So uh, this particular piece is a buyer's choice collectible caroler. And yes, it's Dr. Lori. <laughs> That's right. They made that one for me. And I'm holding an antique, too. And they got my characteristic red sweater on. So a lot of fun. They're sweet people. And uh, it's a collectible caroler. Some of you might recognize Buyer's Choice Limited. Yep. Uh, thanks for asking. My questions of the day are coming up too. Thank you very much for, thank you very much for um, your super chats and your super stickers. Thank you for your super chats and your super stickers, which of course support the channel so I can make more videos that are instructional for all of you. Let's see what we've got. Let's see what we've got. Well, I don't really care for any of these. <laughs> right, let's take a look at let's take a look at this um let's take a look at this uh ring. She don't care for her face. Sorry, I don't care for it. I gotta be honest, I don't have to like it. <laughs> okay, let's see what we've got. <clears throat> Hi, what's your name? Where are you calling from? Hi, I'm Jessica. I'm from Pismo Beach, California. Jessica, what do you want to know about this ring? 
It's so gorgeous. It's so gorgeous. Get it closer to the camera so I can see if it's gorgeous. <laughs> Let's go <laughs> sideways. Show it to me a little sideways. There you go. All right. So what do you know about it? Uh, I tried the diamond selector on it and it went up to the diamond. Okay. Did you, and... so you tested it so you believe this to be a very big diamond? <laughs> right? Not, well, the middle part's a rose quartz. Uh, the middle part's a rose quartz, but the rest of it is a diamond. Yeah. <laughs> Have you calibrated the Presidium gem tester correctly? Uh, no. Uh, yeah. Yeah, okay. I believe and so. Can, and, and you can get the Presidium gem tester and my other recommended products at drlaurieV.com. I get compensation when you purchase through our website, but they're recommended products from me. I've done this for years and years and years. So they're some of the best products that you can, of course, use. How'd you acquire this ring? I got it on Shop Goodwill for oh, $20. $20, and it's just so beautiful, you can't stand it, right? You're just, it's just so beautiful. Are you going to hold it for, keep it for yourself? You're going to resell it? Uh, probably resell it. Okay. It is very beautiful. It's rose quartz. It's worth about $250. What? Yeah, easy. Awesome. Diamonds, rose quartz, based on actual sales records, that's a nice piece. So we're in good health. And answer my question of the day for me. Bobsled or curling at the Winter Olympics? Uh, bobsled. Why, you like the speed? Yes. <laughs> Aren't you afraid? Like, I'd be afraid to be like this going down that whole thing, right? <laughs> yeah, those guys, those guys are pretty, pretty, uh, pretty courageous. Gotta good hang to on. <laughs> good to see you. You gotta hang on. That's right. Good, good to see you from California. <laughs> Not doing a lot of bobsledding in California, right? <laughs> so... Yeah. So when you think something's very beautiful, a couple of different things you want to make sure you look for. Get the, the tools that will help you, the treasure hunting kit. Get, of course, the loop. Get, of course, the diamond tester. Get, of course, the presidium gem tester. If you're going to resell jewelry or if you're going to collect jewelry for yourself, you really have to look at those things and get these tools that will help you. As I said, I get compensation when you buy through our website at the specials and shopping page. Thank you very much for the super chats and super stickers. I know because you're all telling me that I'm helping you to, of course, succeed in your businesses. And I appreciate you, of course, with your super chats and super stickers to help here so I can keep supporting the staff and use staff time so we can make more videos. So thanks for being with me. My guests are here from all over. Let's see what they've got. Maybe I'll like this one. I don't know. <laughs> oh, come on. Yeah, yeah. All right, we've got a, and, and your your um, connection has to be good because if there's snowy in the connection, you know, I can't pick you if there's snow in the connection. All right, oh. we've got a couple of ceramic pieces. It looks like we've got a ceramic figurine. You're going to need to back up so I can see the whole piece. So I can't see well, the whole piece. Glass. So we've got a piece that looks like, okay. it looks like it's probably uh, glass with some a silver top. Then it looks like we've got a piece of ceramic big ceramic jar, which we're turning around. And then we've got a figurine too. All right, well, I guess I'll go with the glass. Thank you, Dr. Oh. Hi, it's Dr. Lori, how are you? Hi, I'm great, Dr. Lori, how are you? I'm fine, what's your name? Where are you calling from? Can you back that up, please? Because I can't see the whole object where you've got yeah. a position. Thank you, honey. What's your uh, first name? name, where are you calling from? My name is Lori also, and I'm calling from Clayton, North Carolina. Do you spell Lori correctly, Lori? I do. It's L O R R I E. You don't spell it correctly. I spell it correctly. <laughs> <laughs> I guess fabulous. I guess every Lori thinks they spell it correctly, right? That's right. Well, my mom did. <laughs> nice to see you. So tell me, did you sign up for my newsletter? I did. And you get it. It's very easy. You get it right there in your email box. All you have to do is go to drlaurieV.com, sign up for the newsletter where it says thumbs up free. The little free icon, free icons are always good, right? Free, and then you can sign up for the newsletter. It comes right into your email box. So thank you for signing up. I hope it's helpful. It's easy to find, of course, right there at drlaurieV.com. So what did you find here? What have you got here, Lori? Okay, we found this at um, a rummage warehouse for $1.25. And the only marking we found on it was HKE. It's very heavy. And okay. I think it's silver on top, maybe lead crystal, and found out maybe that it was from the 1920s to the 1930s, somewhere around there, German made. Who's there helping you speak? And this is my uh, co-partner that 
my partner in crime. Hey, Dr. We, Lori. We go hey, how you doing? Good. We go. What's your name? Daria. Hi, Daria. So what are you, camera shy? No, I just, there wasn't enough room. We wanted to make sure you could see everything. Oh, I see. Well, there's always room for Daria. Come on. Get so down we, here. There's room for Daria. Squeeze. She's the one. Yeah. She's the one. Because we're all it. helping, right? Does that yes. say Cortland from like yes. upstate New York, Cortland? Yes, ma'am. I used to teach there, honey. I'm from actually more towards the Saratoga area. Interesting. I yes. used to teach at SUNY Cortland a thousand years ago. It was a long time ago, but it yes. was a nice school, the SUNY schools. Yes. This particular piece is not sterling silver. It's silver plated. It's very obviously silver plated. How do you tell? First of all, notice, in fact, the way in which it's got sort of a red color coming underneath the silver plate. And that actually is copper. And that Let's also the it. shine of that is Let's actually see. that. Now, Let's if it's marked that. elsewhere... You can, do you see the redness of it? I do, now that you yeah. say that. So the redness is right there. That's what you look for. And it's kind of like as if the red came through another color, you know, like it's seeping through. Mm. Copper is sturdy, so usually they'll use copper. And then they'll plate it using the electroplating process. That's pretty typical in the early years of the 20th century. That piece probably dates about, as you said, between about 1900 and about 1920. Now, that insert is so you can keep things cold right? You can put cold water or ice in it. Usually it was cold water. And then you put something else in the main part of the vessel. I don't think it's lead crystal. I do think it's a heavy glass. Uh, lead crystal would be a little bit too fragile for it, but it's a nice piece. And you said you put, you paid what, a buck? A dollar twenty-five. Yeah, a dollar twenty-five. Value on that piece, I would say anywhere between $65 and $75 retail based on actual sales records. It's a nice piece. Hey, you know what? If you've got birthdays coming up or if you've got holiday gifts that you have to get for one another, the Dr. Lori gift certificate is a great idea. You can do a video call with me, a short one or a long one. I would throw a hint to the people who love you, right? Who want to <laughs> give you some gifts. <laughs> That's awesome. Thank, Thank you, Dr. Lori. Thank you, Dr. It's Dr. my Lori. pleasure. Don't run away, ladies. Wait a second. I want to know, bobsledding or curling for the Olympics in the winter? Bobsledding. I would say ice skating, but since that wasn't an option, I'm going to say uh, bobsledding. <laughs> you don't like my options, huh, Laura? <laughs> I don't blame you. All right. Well, the Lorries are in purple tonight. It's nice to see you guys. Oh, yeah. All right. Thank you. My pleasure. Take good care. So, yeah, when you're looking at pieces like that, I want you to start to try to identify sterling silver versus silver plate. When you can start to do that, you will always be able to identify it because I'm going to show you about it with respect to the marks. If you didn't see my video on silver, you need to see my video on silver marks. But if you didn't see it, one of the ways that you can actually tell another thing of what to look for, which is what I teach you here, is basically, in fact, that, that sort of red color that oftentimes is visible through a piece of silver plate. Don't be overzealous, of course, doing that. Taxco silver is not, is not always sterling. Taxco is a place. Taxco, Taxco is a place in Mexico, in fact, very well known for the designs of Spratling, in fact, and silver in silver in Me from Mexico. And in fact, oftentimes pieces of tax coast, uh, tax co pieces are oftentimes sterling silver, but they would be marked sterling silver. So not necessarily is everything coming out of tax co sterling. So don't make that mistakes. Thanks for that good question. I'll answer your questions right here. Miriam, thank you very much for your super chat and super sticker. I appreciate the support. Uh, do collectors collect silver plated? Yeah, Trina, a lot of people collect silver plate. A lot of people prefer silver plate, in fact. And also silver plate is usually a little bit more inexpensive. So yes, people do collect silver plate. You have to make sure that they're pieces that are relatively unusual. There are pieces of silver plate that sort of everybody has, little, you know, uh, little standing compotes or little plates, you know, serving plates, candy dishes. So those aren't too high in value. But in fact, there are people who collect silver plate, most definitely. Good question. Thanks for that. I'm Dr. Lori. My guests are here from all over the world. Let's see what they've got. We're here. I need your cameras to be horizontal, please. Let's take a look at this piece of um, ceramic. It's got two handles. It looks like a, uh, an amphora kind of form. Let's see what this piece of ceramic is. Hi, it's Dr. Lori. How are you? Hi, Dr. Lori. I'm good. How are you? I'm good. What's your name? My name's Anna. Hi, Anna, where are you calling from? 
I'm calling from Spokane, Washington. Nice. How did you acquire this piece? It's looking pretty Italian. <laughs> I thought so. It's a junk uh, junk store purchase, three dollar <laughs> purchase price. It's got some interesting things going on with it. Okay, what's interesting? What do you want to know about it's it? Transfer wear printed. I'll show you the side, which is unusual for Italian ceramics because they're almost always hand painted. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. It's got some dimples under the handles. They're I want you to see a couple things before. Uh, stay with me a second. On the side where you were, where you were pointing, where you said you knew it was transfer wear, it yes. looks like two pieces of wallpaper that, yes. in fact, you can see that line. If you'll turn it, there you go, where you can see that line where it's almost as if on the left-hand side, there's sort of half of a leaf form. And then on the right-hand side, just above her finger, you can see that that doesn't match up. It's sort of like when you're putting up wallpaper and you miss the registration, you don't match it up well. So that's a transfer wear piece. The form looks Italian, but transfer wear is in, not always is it hand painted, but most of the time it's hand painted. It's so you said there's dimples, you said there's dimples underneath the handles. Yes. Is, that a, is it a glaze skip where you can see the ceramic? Um, I don't know if I can, there, you can get underneath. Yeah, get closer. Yeah, all right. So that's not great. So so far, I'm not seeing a whole lot of quality here. Okay, I'm glazed seeing. Interior. I'm seeing large. Oh, you go ahead. Glazed interior, um, uneven crazing on the lip. Well, uh, crazing is always uneven. Glazed inside. You know, crazing. Crazing is always uneven. Who's talking with you? Who that's is that? Dad. That's Dad, the owner of the jug. Hello, Dad. How are you? Hello. What's your name? John. Nice to see you, John. Thanks for joining me. So how did you acquire this piece? I found it in a junk store. It was so filthy, dirty. Yeah. That nobody even wanted it. And I could see by the handles that it really looked like it had some age. And it was, I was attracted to it. And I saw those medallions on the side. And I figured, this is a rare piece. It's not rare, really, at all. <laughs> It's not very rare. It has a little bit of age. I would say it probably dates to about the 1940s or World War II era. So it has a little bit of age. Let's call it 75 years or so. I would say in terms of value, it's about what, 10 inches tall? 11 inches tall, yes. 11 inches tall. Probably used as a presentation piece. There probably was a pair. It probably has a mate somewhere. The transfer wear decreases value a little bit. I would say value on it about $90. Okay. Not bad for a couple bucks of an investment, but not particularly rare based on actual sales records. Why is the value relatively high for this ceramic piece? Here's why. It could make a nice statement piece in interior design. So under a hundred bucks is usually hundred bucks is usually the number that most will actually pay for a piece like that one because it does have that nice Italian Mediterranean style form on it. Thank you very much. Hey, bobsledding or curling before you go? Curling. What do you think? Curling. Yeah, what does she think? I, I'm going to go bobsledding. A little going more. bobsledding. Curling is not usually what people choose, but I think curling is very fascinating how they mm -hmm. do that. And I think also the way in which they train for curling is pretty cool. Thanks for showing us some good transfer wear. Thank you. Bye-bye. Oh, you're, you know, you're sitting there. You might as well participate. <laughs> it's good to see all of you guys. My guests are here from all over. Don't forget to give me your decision about the question of the day. What's your answer? Bobsledding or curling for the question of the day. Let's see what they've got. The guests are here. Oh, somebody's outside. <laughs> Wow. Well, if you're going to schlep something outside, I'm going to see what you got. What's that thing from outside? What are you doing? What is that? Well, you were mentioning curling, and I found this thing, and it kind of looks like maybe a game you would play. It's got these weird... Oh, it's got a rope uh, around it. Why does it have a rope around it? There's like an indent in here, so I can't tell if it's been placed here for so long that it has a an indention or if it's supposed to have a rope. I've, I found oh. this object. What's your name? Uh, I'm Eric Jones. Hi, Eric. How you doing? Where are you calling from? Somewhere sunny. I'm in Daytona Beach, Florida. Can you put it down? Can you put this so I can see the whole piece? Oh, that's a little better. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So it looks, oh, yeah, okay. 
All right, and the, the feet or the legs on that side. So it looks like it's basically on an incline and it goes around. So it looks like something goes around, probably a ball goes around, sort of like um, a pinball machine type of thing. I think you're missing the other end. Yeah, it looks like there was something that was supposed to be here. Oh my gosh, it looks, so it looks like the mice have got it that too. Was that in the storage locker? No, I actually just was riding my bike and I saw it and I grabbed it by the rope and it was just so cool. I, I kind okay, of well, it's it kind of cool, but it's kind of been mouse eaten. Look at the bottom. Let me show you what this looks like. Where you said, I think something's missing from down there. Nope, the other edge, the other end that you picked it up down there. See that? That's Eric, the other side. Yes. Other right side, hon. No, other oh. end, other end. There you go. So right there, you can see that, first of all, it's been in water, and it probably has been eaten by vermin, and I mean like mice, right? Other types of little animals, if you will. That's what you typically see, and when you see deterioration like that, I want you to be able to recognize it because it is something to look for. So that piece also had another piece on it, maybe another piece that connected into it, but definitely a game to try to recognize so yeah, I'm sorry. Why. That's They're... all right. Not your, not your fault. Daytona Beach is a busy place. Uh, I would say value on it. Probably the value of the wood. Maybe it's worth about ten bucks. Thank you. You're welcome. Do you know sorry. what it is? Sorry, maybe I think it's game. definitely a game, and I think the problem is that you don't have the other half. You don't have the other part uh, where it was eaten, basically eaten away or it was separated and then only that portion was eaten away. I think it was probably in a storage locker. I think it was standing this way on the cement floor, right or on the concrete floor, and then the animals were able to get at it because it was in the in there. That's what happened. And then they probably cleaned out the storage locker and put it on the side of the road and you said, "Hey, it looks cool. I'm going to take it." I don't think that indentation had anything to do with that particular rope. Thank you, Dr. Lori. I thought maybe it was a game, so I just wanted to show you and thought maybe it was yeah. old from a ship or something. Probably, as I said, it probably was a game. Bob sledding or curling? Uh, curling. Curling. Nice to see you, Eric. Thank you, Dr. Lori. You're welcome, hon. I don't think Eric's doing a lot of curling in Florida, but, you know, he's finding stuff by the side of the road, and sometimes the stuff at the side of the road is great. Uh, I've seen a lot of great things come through with my Real Bargains videos of stuff that's found in the trash or by the side of the road, right? Uh, you can watch some of them. One of the things that I think that come to mind is that very important Beatles piece of Beatles memorabilia that was found in the trash at the side of the road. So, hey, it's out there. You can find it, too. I'll show you what to look for as well. But remember, when you're looking at these pieces, identify condition. Condition is going to be important. And I'll show you what something should look like. If something is water damaged, it can actually be hidden pretty easily. So I want you to be able to understand what it looks like and how something should look if it's been in good condition when it's been stored or in bad condition, poor condition, surroundings when it's been stored. I'm Dr. Lori. Let's see what my guests have got. All these tips are going to help all of you. All right? Not enough light in the upper corner. Uh, not enough light with what looks like might be a map. Uh, too close to the front. Somebody's got their hand on top of the thing. Can't see it. It's always a good idea to have someone holding the piece. Let's take a look at this piece of glass. It looks like a blue glass pitcher. Always a good idea to have your one piece stationary, whether it's the object or your device. Because if you're moving your device and moving the object, it's hard for us to see. Hi, it's Dr. Lori. How are you? Good. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. So tell me, uh, what have you got here? What's your first name? My name is Sarah. Nice to see you, Sarah. Um, Where are you calling from? Reno, Nevada. Okay. You were saying? Oh, um, I just got this uh, picture at an uh, antiques uh, estate sale. for. It was in a lot of miscellaneous glassware for about $5. Okay, I like this piece. And of course, it's going to be worth less. It's going to cost you less than $5 because, of course, you've got a whole lot of other pieces in that, in that uh, same lot. So is it damaged in any way? Um, I don't see any chips or anything. It looks like it's in really great condition. Okay, let's take a look at the top. Can you show us the top as if you picked it up that way? I want you to look at this particular type of top and spout where the actual circular rim is actually part of the spout too. That's very indicative of any time period after World War II and before 1965. You typically see that type of spout for 
lemonade jars for, for pitchers that are going to have juice in them, that kind of thing often. Also notice this teal blue. That's going to help you to identify time period as well. Is there a mark on the bottom that teal blue is more popular between 1945 and about 1960? I didn't see any. So um, you there's can, no mark. You can see the big seam, which indicates that it's molded together, fused together in two pieces. I like the shape of the handle as well. American glass, of course, molded and pressed. It has a nice sort of... Uh, texture to it and you say it's in very good condition how much did you pay for it under five bucks right yes value on the piece about 45 dollars okay perfect thank you perfect thank you those are always based on actual sales records where a similar piece has sold not just a price not just a list price not just a hope or a dream where it's sold that's what i want you to learn it's not just oh somebody's put it up and listed it at this or somebody listed it at that that's not an appraisal. An appraisal is a correct identification and a value based on actual sales records. My question of the day for you, Sarah, which is curling or bobsledding, if you're at the Winter Olympics, you know, you got a ticket and you can go to curling or bobsledding. What do you go watch? Curling. Curling. Okay. Okay. Yeah. It's sort of Thank like bocce know. on ice, right? You got to sort of get the thing close to it. If any of you ever played bocce. So yeah. thanks very much, Sarah. Nice to see you from Reno. See you too. Thank you. My pleasure. My pleasure. So when you're looking for glass pieces, I want you to look for that seam. Sure. The seam's going to tell you whether or not you have a blown piece or a piece that's constructed in a different way, oftentimes molded or pressed together. And also remember the colors are going to be extremely important for value and identifying Time period, age, and origin, right? Where a piece of glass is made is as important as, of course, what it's used for, its function, as well as, um, of course, its, um, its function, as well as its age. So origin, age, color, all these are important. I'm Dr. Lori, the PhD Antiques Appraiser. Let's see what my, my, my guests have got tonight. All right, we've got a piece of ceramic. We've got a picture of an of a gentleman there. We've got someone who's got a camera held horizontally. <laughs> Please hold the camera not so it is vertical, so it's not vertical, so it's horizontal. Someone's holding it vertically. It's, it has to be horizontal, the cameras. Well, let's see what this little tiny bird is. Looks like a little tiny beaded bird. It's an owl, Dr. Lori. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Whoops. Roxanne, Michigan. Hi, Roxanne. It's not in front of the camera. So it's an owl ring? Yes, an owl ring. Darn yeah, it. find oh, your yeah. camera, honey. Have somebody help you find the camera. Back up. There it is. Thank you, whoever that is. <laughs> we got helpers. Okay. All right. One of my and daughters. Little, and can you go a little bit farther back, please? All right. And that light is not really helping that light's giving a lot of glare oh it's an owl that's a ring okay yeah. so it's set with it looks like it's set with crystals multicolored austrian crystals oh how did you acquire it um second hand store how much did you pay seven dollars i All still right. have the tag on it is it marked no no so there's no mark around the band there's no mark on any of it, right? No, not that I could find. Okay. Do you like owls? Do you collect owls? No. No, you just bought it because you thought it's pretty, pretty cool. Yeah, I thought it was cool and unusual, and you say to look for that. I want you to look for things that are unique. I want you to look for quality first, quality first, because... When a piece is of good quality, everybody can see that this piece is of good quality. Here's why. Notice the different colors and notice how the light is caught by these multicolored uh, Austrian crystals. They're very high quality crystals. Then notice, of course, the head and part of the body looks like colorless crystals, but everything seems to be sparkling. We know that right. they're not gemstones, right? But it is really mm -hmm. quite fine. Figural elements are popular because you have a lot of people who collect figural elements only, right? Figural elements such as uh, the owls or maybe you have, uh, you know, a, a particular figure like I like fish, for example, that kind of thing. I would say value on that piece 
Peace probably dates to the middle part of the 20th century to about the 1980s. So the 60s to the 1980s, I would say value on it. I'm sorry it's not marked at all. I wish that the band was marked with some kind of mark, a maker's mark something, but it's not. I would say value on that piece, just about $150 for that piece. You can command a lot in the costume jewelry venue or arena for a piece like that based on actual sales records. Why? It shows quality in materials. That's what they look for. That's a very good piece for seven bucks. Congratulations. Did you get it at a thrift store? Yes, yes. Where was it? Was it just sitting by itself? No, it was in with rings on a ring holder. You know how they have them. Yeah, yeah. And they put more than one ring in. Okay. So yes, people were not really was... paying attention to it, or are there all these other rings that they were paying attention to? Well, it wasn't nobody there when I got there. I was the only one to look at the rings. So. Well, that yeah. helps to get the good stuff if nobody's there to compete with you, right? Yes, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Like, one more thing I wanted to ask you. Have you, have you gotten all of your um gifts getting ready for birthdays or holiday if you need a gift certificate that's a good gift you can throw a hint to some people like your daughter who's sitting here does oh, she not know what to get you clear. <laughs> what did you say hon? i got that hint loud and clear yesterday all right as long as you got that in because you know what my mother would say you only have one mother <laughs> so so make sure she gets some good gift. I'm sure you're a good kid. Let me ask you this question while I got you both there, and you both should answer it for me if you don't mind. Bob sledding or curling at the Winter Olympics? Bob sledding. Bob sledding all the Bob way. Bob sledding all the way. You guys know. Michigan should know because it's cold there. I should know that. Yes. I went to school there. <laughs> so <laughs> thanks so much, ladies. Nice to see you. Thank, Thank you, you, Dr. Lori. My pleasure. And nice to see all of you. Thanks to my guests and thanks to you for being here. I'm Dr. Lori. I'll see you next time.